Supermicro Computer announced the 10 for 1 stock split and the company expects its stock will trade on a split adjusted basis on October 1st. This raised a question from investors asking if they should buy SMCI stock before the split or after. I'll answer that question in this video. That being said, Supermicro is in the middle of dealing with a bigger issue. SMCI delayed the filing of its financial statements and received a letter from NASDAQ notifying it of non-compliance. Supermicro stock has fallen on hard times since booming to start the year. In the video, I'll review the latest developments for Supermicro and answer if investors should buy the stock before or after the split. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so here is the announcement from Supermicro Computer saying the board of directors authorized the 10 for 1 forward stock split of its common stock and they expect trading to commence on a split adjusted basis on October 1st, 2024. Of course, Supermicro Computer stock has experienced a volatile year soaring to start, right, from trading close to $300 per share and jumping over $1,000 per share and then falling all the way back down to around $400 per share as of this recording. A stock split will make it more affordable for more stock buyers that do not have access to fractional share buying, which many brokerages do allow for fractional share buying. Now, every time I talk about a stock split, I like to do this example where I share what actually happens as a result of the stock split. So here I have two sides of an equation here. We have the before stock split on the left-hand side and after stock split on the right-hand side. So let's look at earnings per share. So before a stock split, if the earnings per share are $10, after the stock split, the earnings per share will be $1 because you're splitting the shares. So you're dividing it by 10. The number of shares outstanding before the stock split, if there was 100 shares outstanding, that will now become 1,000 shares outstanding. You're multiplying by 10 because you're taking one share and turning it into 10, okay? And then finally, the stock's price will also be split by 10, right? If the stock price was $50 before the split, it will be $5 after the split. So you're taking earnings per share, you're dividing that by 10 because it's a per share metric and you're increasing the number of shares by 10. You're not increasing profitability, that's not changing. You're just taking the existing profits and splitting it up in smaller pieces. The number of shares outstanding will 10x and the stock price will be divided by 10. So it's just the divide or multiply thing happening here for the company's stock price and the number of shares outstanding. Nothing else is changing. I give this example of a pizza, right? You have a whole pizza and it's just a matter of how you're slicing that pizza. You're not getting any more pizza. You're not getting any less pizza. You're just slicing the pizza up in a different way. So does that create any kind of value for shareholders? Is that any reason to buy a stock because it used to be cut up in a certain way and now it's cut up in a different way? That's the argument I typically make. And that's what finance theory suggests, right? Because there is nothing changing in the company. You're just changing the way you slice it. But there's a lot of argument that goes against that. There's a lot of investors that get excited about a stock split and they think that because of the stock split, the stock price is going to soar higher after the split. Those are not substantiated on fundamentals. There's no reason for a stock price to increase following a stock split. There's no fundamental reason for that to happen. Would you want to pay a higher price because I give you the same amount of pizza, but I cut it up in smaller pieces? Hopefully the answer is no, because you're still getting the same amount of pizza. So there is little reason for the stock price to increase. And in fact, I made this same argument with NVIDIA stock when they were about to make their stock split. And mind you, I've been bullish on NVIDIA stock all year long. I've had NVIDIA stock rated as a buy, one of my top stocks to buy all year long, right? So I've recommended NVIDIA stock a buy. 
But when they were about to do their split, the argument I made was the same, that the split is no reason to change your opinion on NVIDIA stock. If you already liked NVIDIA stock, then it's a good stock to buy, which is the camp I found myself in. If you did not like NVIDIA stock, then the split was no reason to change your mind. So the split is a big nothing burger. It should not change your opinion on whether or not you want to buy a stock or not buy a stock. And you can see NVIDIA stock results. It split, it split adjusted price before the split was around $120 per share. And it's now trading lower than when it was before the split. So in fact, the split didn't cause the stock price to soar like so many people were saying in my comment section when I made that video about NVIDIA stock. Now, when I share this example with students, their eyes pop wide open and they're surprised that there isn't actually anything changing about a stock when they do a stock split because there's so much misconception out there about the impact of a stock split. There's so much rumors, there's so much... And partly to blame is some of the influencers on YouTube that like to hype up that situation and they don't give the fundamental aspects of a stock split. They don't actually discuss what's happening underneath the actual plumbing behind the stock split. And they like to create that excitement and do the enthusiasm. And they don't, maybe they don't know because they're not trained like I am in finance and they don't have finance degrees and they haven't completed the CFA program. And so they follow whatever they're seeing in the market, in the media as well, without actually doing any due diligence. And they know this is a popular topic, so they'll discuss this quite often in their videos. But I don't see, I don't see them discuss this as often as I think should be discussed. Now, that being said, the stock split is no reason to buy supermicro computer stock. But there are bigger things happening with Super Microcomputer. Super Microcomputer, as you probably already know, their sales have been soaring in the last year and a half or so on the back of demand for optimized AI servers. But at the same time, its cash flow from operations is going backwards. You can see in the year that ended June 30th for 2023, the company generated $664 million in cash flow from operations. But in the year that just ended, June 30th, 2024, the company's cash flow from operations was negative, two and a half billion. And I've made videos about this, how companies that are growing as quickly as Supermicro, it's common to see them have negative cash flow from operations because of the mismatch between the amount of money they're paying suppliers and when they're getting money from their customers, the accounts receivable, accounts payable mismatch. And that has been exacerbated by the company's phenomenal growth rates. But it also raises questions about the accounting of the company. And then there was that short seller report that accused the company of misreporting its financial results. And then to add fuel to the fire, the company delayed its financial statement, which made investors a lot more concerned about super microcomputer stock. Now, whether or not you should buy before or after the stock split, I don't think the stock split should be any reason to change your opinion, as I highlighted earlier. And if you want to buy before or after, I would say it's not the stock split that you should be waiting for with super micro computer stock, but it's the outcome of the delay of the financial statement that should be in focus. I think investors should wait for the outcome of that before buying super micro computer stock instead of focusing on the stock split. Hey everyone, so many of you have been asking about my investing strategy and I'm excited to announce that I've written a book that's available for sale now that describes my six step invest investing framework for evaluating stocks. I've added the link in the description below.